When it comes to parenting technology, there are five things that I consistently see parents not doing that's making their job parenting technology a little bit harder. So what are those five things? Let's get right into it. Number five on my countdown is not putting the correct date of birth when signing up for accounts for your children. Now, some parents will make this date younger than the child is, and some parents will make it older than the child is. There's a couple reasons people do this. The first one is if they're trying to allow their child to have a social media account before the age of 13. So your 11-year-old wants to sign up for Snapchat, so you lie about their date of birth in order to get them an account because they can't have an account until they are 13. The other reason parents lie about their child's age is to make them younger younger because they think that at 13, the parental controls and things get limited after they turn 13. So they try to make their child younger to extend that parental control. I have a video about how that is inaccurate, so make sure to check that out. But there are a lot of things that can be put in place when your child has the correct date of birth. Trying to correct this date of birth at a later time can be a huge pain. So making sure that you do not lie about your child's date of birth when signing up for any online accounts. If they are too young, that's what you just need to tell your kid. I'm sorry, you're too young to have an account. We would have to lie about your age in order to create this account, and I'm not willing to do that. With the making it younger than they are supposed to be, I promise it'll be okay. Just make them the correct age, and all of the correct settings will still be able to be put in place. Number four on my countdown is not shutting down devices and internet at bedtime. Kids need sleep. I will preach this from the rooftops. This is one of my huge, huge sticking points. So I cannot believe how many kids are texting or online at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Kids need to be shut down from the internet at bedtime so that they can get a proper amount of sleep. Now, sleep restores cognitive functions. When a child is sleep deprived, they are not thinking clearly and they are more susceptible to suggestion. They are more susceptible to be making mistakes and their mental health can suffer because of the lack of sleep. This is something that people who are trying to brainwash your child or you use in order to perpetuate this brainwashing is making you sleep deprived. So making sure your child is getting a proper amount of sleep every night includes a way to shut down the devices. So through parental controls or through your Wi-Fi router, through your cellular plan, making sure that the internet is shut down at a specific time every night. And this can go across the board. Sometimes I don't need to be online at midnight, 1 a.m. I mean, let's face it, I never need to be online at midnight or 1 a.m. Get proper amounts of sleep and your entire health will improve. So the number four mistake is people do not shut down the internet or shut down devices at a bedtime every single night. So make sure you start doing that. The number three thing you are forgetting to do is to set up a content filter. Many parents will just hand over a device or allow kids to use the smart TV or the computer without a content filter in place. There are free content filters available to use. One is from OpenDNS. I have a video about that, so make sure to check that video out if you're looking for a free content filter that you can use. There's other content filters that you can set on on the devices themselves. You can install an app like Canopy or you can install an app like ESET or NetNanny. There's tons of different content filters that you can set up. There's even built-in content filters. So through Netflix, you can set up a pin protected profile for the adults and have a more filtered profile for your kids. So wherever there's a filter in place or that you can set up a separate section for your children to browse a little more cleanly, definitely set that up. Now, 
All content filters are not going to work perfectly all the time, so you do want to check on that, but having no content filter on your network is definitely a huge mistake that parents are still making today. The number two thing that you are not doing is researching enough before allowing a device, an app, or anything for your child. So they're asking for Snapchat, you just go ahead and hand over Snapchat. Or they ask for a video game and you don't research the video game properly. You don't look at the ESRB rating and make sure it is not a mature rated game. The mature rated game is for 18 and over. So your child should not be playing the mature rated game. Make sure you research everything about whatever game, whatever app, whatever device that your child wants before you hand it over. Another example of this is an iPhone. iPhones are notoriously difficult to monitor content on. You can manage an iPhone just fine by shutting down apps, shutting down access to the device at specific times, but it's the content monitoring that you're going to have a difficult time with if your child has an iPhone. So giving them an Android device or a kids safe smartphone is going to really help bridge that gap as they're learning how to use technology. Make sure you do all of the research instead of my child wants a phone, I'm going to go out and get them an iPhone without looking into how to set it up properly, how to put on parental controls, and how to make it safer. I always use this analogy, make it like your child has been diagnosed with a disease. If they're asking for a specific app, a specific device, make sure you do as much research as you would do if your child was diagnosed with the disease and then go ahead and make your decision from there. The number one parenting technology thing you are not doing is talking to your kids frequently and getting on the same page with technology. I put handing over technology in the same bracket as helping teach them how to drive. When they are learning how to drive, when they have their learner's permit, you're in the front seat. You are driving with them. You are talking to them about how to drive properly. This is going to be the same thing you need to do for technology. And it's not a one and done conversation. Some parents will want to put on parental controls sneakily or behind their child's back. And this is going to cause a lot of issues because when you do find something concerning, how are you going to talk to your child about it? They're going to know that something has been installed and then your trust is going to break down. You want to be on the same page. You want to set the expectations, set the consequences for breaking those expectations and make sure you're talking about it frequently. When you see your child laughing at something on their phone, ask them what was so funny. Have them show you the video. Make sure you're getting involved and you're talking to your kids on a frequent basis about what they're doing on technology, about what they like about technology, talk about the news around technology, something that happened in the news that might be scary, talk to your kids about that, You know, help them understand what the dangers are out there, but don't frighten them, don't scare them. Talk about what you can do to make sure that doesn't happen to you or that you don't fall for that particular scam. So having these conversations frequently is something that parents are forgetting to do. So make sure that you sit down with your kid today and talk about exactly what their goals are in technology, what they like about it, who their favorite creators are, what they like to watch on YouTube, what they like to watch on TikTok or Instagram. Go through their feed with them and understand exactly what is being shown to them. So having these conversations is going to go a really long way in making sure your family has a healthy relationship with tech. So those are the five things that parents are not doing. Hopefully you are doing all five of those. If you are, let me know one of your favorite conversations that you've had with your child and like this video, make sure you are subscribed to Family Tech. If you have any questions about technology, please feel free to reach out. I am Family Tech on all social media platforms and I will respond to my direct messages. So we will see you next time.